better not drop your screwdriver, you kill somebody. Those things have been hit by lightning. They've got one, one the blade, you know, got all fractured up. It's pretty cool. So let's go look at, uh, just so I said I did it, the text. I know you guys can read, but uh, um, this is, let me get there. Chapter 5, figure 5.6, I believe. I don't know if you went through this last time, but it's kind of a key thing related to Paul. Um, oh gosh, I didn't get to any place. There you go, thank you. This box 5.2, I won't go through that, removing the moisture, is very worthwhile to understand. Um, anytime you burn anything, you're doing no good making energy as you're b taking that moisture off before you, the heat of vaporization, before you start getting to your energy. And boy, we know that at the mill. We burned hog fuel at the mill and sawdust, purchased and from ourselves. And the book shows, uh, in fact, we'll get there in a minute. That's this right here. Look at uh, uh, <coughs> this figure. Let me get it bigger. 5.6, I'm showing it here. This first bar on the bar graph, air dried wood, and the three or four uh, segments of each bar is the bottom is the ash content of that material. Fixed carbon, that's where you're getting your energy. The volatile matter, okay, that's what you got to burn off, and the water. Well, if we had wood that we were burning at that mill, this is showing this air-dried wood at 20% moisture. We'd have been the heralds of the pulp and paper industry. It doesn't exist. It's got to be laying around a long time before it's down to that moisture. Typically, it runs around 50%. I mean, you're lucky if it's if it's 40. So you it and you could we could tell. We got a, a load of wood in that was wetter than another load on the reaction in the boiler. And there's some stuff so wet it almost stuffed the boiler out. So moisture is a big deal and that box explains in part why that heat and vaporization is an important concept. Um, but so this compare this chart is comparing their bar graph comparing the energies achieved in the bottom horizontal uh, axis as the gigajoule per ton is increasing rank from air dried wood up to in the middle there 24 subbatubus coal all the way to anthracite which is your real deeply mined coal alright it might contain a lot of sulfur now though you might not be able to use it so much um, with the amount of fixed carbon and the fixed carbon is what you want of course fixed carbon it gives you carbon dioxide it's got to get your energy from somewhere. Um, oh boy. Do they go through this uh, carbon dioxide released in coal combustion at all? Important concept. Let me get there. I'm going to bounce around on you a little bit. Um, No, I don't know where it can go. It's in your, this particular, if I remember right, uh, and maybe I'll draw it up brand new. Here we go. It shouldn't take very long. This is on, this box is on page uh, 151. I urge you as you go through this course to spend some time on these boxes. I know it could be hideous. And I'm hoping instructors help you 
through that. Sometimes they'll go from one quantity or parameter showing the units to another and don't show how to get there. And I've taken the time as an instructor when that was particularly problematic to do that. Because it's real fundamental to under, particularly get into uh, the physics of a wave, for example, and going from it to determine how much energy you can get from a wave in a certain system, really important to understand how it goes there. And it's really cool to learn it. It is, it is really neat. Um, but anyway, you got uh, carbon is in your one ton of coal plus your oxygen gives you carbon dioxide. There's other things going on, obviously, too. There's water in there, and there's uh, sulfur and all that. But stoichiometrically, that's chemistry. You've got 12 of carbon. 2 times 16 of oxygen gives you 44 of CO2. Okay. So for every unit of carbon, you're getting 44 of CO2. Because all the oxygen. So for one kilogram of carbon, you get 3.67 kilograms of CO2. Important concept. Okay. That's where your issue comes from. So will that depend on your type of coal you're using? Absolutely. And that's one point of that. Now, your the side doesn't have very much water, so it's not going to convert right. to more CO2. It's more valuable, though, to the consumer. You got a lot, it's a lot more energy dense. It's got a lot more warmth. You, you looked at that chart, it's got 34 gigajoules per ton versus the lower value coal at, let's say, 24, or the average we use for our problem, 28. But it's going to put out more CO2. Yeah. Now there's a move afoot to require coal plants to recover CO2. There are systems that can do that, that have been tested that can do that. It's going to put a big, 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 uh, load on the consumer. It's expensive. So is that Again, if you're the one to figure that out, find a technology that can capture carbon dioxide during the combustion of coal. I don't know how many Lamborghinis you could have. Lamborghini, Lamborghinis, you could have a million of them, man. It's, yeah. You got this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you know, man. Okay. Um, so is that 44 uh, CO2 molecules? Yeah, it's a relative so, atomic masses. And so I, is that what's going towards like the parts per million in the atmosphere? Sure. Okay. Sure. Yes. Yes. This. Let's say this 3.67 kilograms of coal. That's a mass. Uh -huh. That's a weight on Earth. Okay. It's a mass. So you got 3.67 kilograms of CO2 going up in the air. And lots of 3.67s because one kilogram of coal, as we saw, isn't very much. There's 100, almost 90 metric tons. So there's, what we say, the 90,000 kilograms of coal in that one rail car. So you got 3.67 kilograms of CO2 that comes off that coal in the atmosphere. That's the issue with our global warming. Not D, but one of the, 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 the vehicles are a big one too. And us, we make CO2. Yeah. yeah. Tough so problem. No, I try to take the other back. I did. It's. You remind me of a student last week. But anyway, um, <laughs> no. Uh, no, no, I like it. No, no, it's it's per pervasive out there. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hard problem. I just but there's see. so much value in solving that problem for everybody. Everybody's trying to solve the problem. We'll get there. Look what happened in our history 
This book does a terrific job of looking at the his look at the development of electricity in the next chapter and how fast are is next chapter nuclear? Even nuclear. Holy cow, back in the forties that was just the, the the advances there by young, young people were terrific. Going way back to eighteen hundred, some of these guys were seventeen, eighteen stinking years old, making these very, very important discoveries. We just didn't have, haven't had these breakthroughs much in recent times. There's a lot out there, and that's one thing I think that this course can be most valuable for is giving you the tools to like a, take a look at some of that. You read something and is this, yeah, is it going to amount to anything or not? Is this worth my time? There's a lot of ideas out there. There's a lot of good stuff. There, I don't think that one's been found yet. I think we'll find it. There's too much, um, and, and this course doesn't go into conservation efficiencies. Okay, make that boiler more efficient. Now, I also make our energy usage less. And we, we're doing it with lighting in steps, okay. How many of you have got the old incandescent bulbs? I do around because my wife doesn't like the other ones, but that's another story. But it's advancing, advancing to use less energy to do the same amount of work for us. I want to see. I'm not going to have no lights on at night if I want to do something, so I'm going to turn the light on. You know, we're going to use this stuff. Conservation is another tool. This building, if you take building energy in this program, that class is really pretty good. That's the class about conservation in this in this thing. It's it's really pretty good. And how to build energy efficient homes and all kind. I mean, daylighting and all that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, done. Oil. Yeah, you're like really, okay. Any questions, comments? Um, what have I not covered here? You'd want to get covered in the about four seconds we got left or something? Yeah. Huh? Okay. Um, you've been good. Northwest uh, Energy has a coupon up there, one dollar off every package of uh, high efficiency bulbs. Yes, and you'll learn a lot about that in this course in Senate. Regulatory based. Uh, so almost every major company in the United States has an arm aimed at uh, renewable energy in some way or another. Yeah. So are LED light bulbs worth the, the money? I'll leave that up to you. But in this course, you'll learn enough to be able to oh, calculate that. Answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't have them. That's because I've got all these incandescent. My wife doesn't want to wait for these other ones to turn on. You know, and they don't. And the LEDs oh, are even better. I know that. I just say, ask my wife. You yeah. like flick it on, and you're like, oh, it's not as bright. And you like turn around, and you're like, oh, it's bright. I like them better. You, you yeah. don't even notice. We got some in our house. But, yeah, this course doesn't go into conservation very much. Yeah. So I just want to know how many little mini wind turbines I need for LED lights in my house. <laughs> I'm too afraid to ask. Hey, at this course, you'll be able to calculate that. I, I know. Yes. All right. Thank you.